Hey, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Revelations. I'm Pastor Chuck Reese, your show host and the executive producer. This is a series all about evangelism and discipleship. We're highlighting ministries all around the country that are serious about just that, hoping that you, our viewer, to get a couple of revelations. Hey, God is still working and is a part for you to be playing in the body of Christ. Today, we're in our own backyard in Fort Lauderdale, visiting Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale. And with me is the senior pastor, Bob Coy. Pastor Bob, thank you so much for letting us join you guys here in the, the Active Word Studios. Well, Pastor Chuck, I'm honored to uh, be a part of this program. I truly am. Thank you. Well, you've been evangelizing me and discipling me uh, since 99, and uh, I've been hearing you and Fidel and a lot of the pastors preaching from the pulpit. So give our viewers a little insight as to how Calvary Chapel started, I guess the vision for Calvary Chapel. Well, Pastor Chuck, my eyes were opened in an unusual way. For years, I was in the business of... Uh, Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Literally in that business. Me I worked too. for Capitol Records uh, for years in Detroit. And that was the limelight in the recording industry. And I honestly can say I enjoyed that. Um, I didn't realize that while I was with a heathen heart navigating my own path, mm -hmm. that what the Bible said is true uh, would be something I'd experienced. You know, in the book of Proverbs, twice, God says, there's a way that seems right to a man, but mm -hmm. it ends in death. Mm -hmm. And it seemed right to me. I mean, I'm having a great time, yeah. but it's slowly destroying me. And uh, the same guy, myself, that was hired by this uh, international record company is now being let go because of the way I was behaving, the way that I was reacting. Uh, my life was on a slow course of self-destruction. Well, I didn't stop there. I moved to Vegas, yeah. and in Las Vegas, I started doing things with entertainment on the Las Vegas Strip. Long story short, my younger brother got Jesus. He yeah. got religion, right. and uh, I didn't understand it at first. The more he and I would spend time, mm -hmm. I could see something different in him. And that difference, I had to really consider because it was so genuine, it was so authentic, and that difference led me to my own decision to mm -hmm. say, yeah, it's so real in him, it's got to be real, mm -hmm. I'm ready to discover, is this real for me? So that's the salvation story, if right. you will, and more yeah. questions certainly you're free to ask. Yeah. But then the ministry begins, because you know everyone who's actually saved is sanctified for a purpose. Right. And I believe that God had a purpose for my life, and that's where the rest of the story begins. Yeah, so here you are in Las Vegas, you're teaching children's ministry and eventually became Pastor Bob. Tell us about the prayer request card and how uh, you and Diane answered that call to come down to Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, it's interesting because you know just enough. Obviously, in everyone's journey, there's more to that story. Right. But the highlight of that is a willing heart. And yeah. I could say to anyone viewing that if you have a willing heart, God has a specific plan. Right. And his specific plan has got to be matched with a willing heart. If you don't have a willing heart, you're never going to find a specific plan. Right. But trust me, God does have an imprint, yeah. a, a specific plan for everybody. So what was my plan? I meet my wife in Las Vegas. She's part of another Calvary Chapel. She's mm -hmm. there serving just for a week. Yeah. I fall crazy in love with her. Next thing you know, she and I, now living in Vegas, now part of that church, are praying. God, what do you want from me and what have you called me to do? Yeah. Because the natural giftedness to tell other people about Jesus is happening in my life in a natural way. We soon begin to pray, God, where and when? And that's when I found myself a part of an early morning prayer time. Um, it was orchestrated by the senior pastor. We would get requests from the congregation. We'd simply pray their prayers. One particular morning, it would always start at 6 o'clock. I have a stack of prayer requests, and a few of the other pastors have these prayer request stacks. Right. And I get to the request, pray for a Calvary Chapel in Fort Lauderdale. There's not one there. My husband and I and family are moving. Right. We'd love if God would plant a church there. And while I'm praying that, I can tell you, God's speaking to my heart. Mm -hmm. So much so that afterwards, the gal who actually wrote the request was in the sanctuary, in the church that morning. And she met me outside and said, you know, while you were praying that prayer, I was just wondering maybe you would be the guy that would do that. <laughs> and uh, she doesn't know, but it was almost like God turned on the volume right. and the reverb. Right. And it was like, I wonder if God, God would call you, you. This, this word's for you. That's a Rima word, right? Exactly. So. <laughs> and I was so convinced. I went home that afternoon and I said, Diane, I prayed for Fort Lauderdale. I can't get it off my mind. And she said quite quickly, hey, that sounds exciting. Let's begin to seek the Lord for confirmation. Yeah. And the way that God is so faithful to do, he continues to show up time and time again. And finally you say, this is the Lord's will. And then you get to another place 
and I hope your viewers understand this, at some point, if you don't do what God's calling you to do, it's yeah. disobedience. Absolutely. And I knew that if I didn't go, it would be disobedient. So we packed up the truck and we uh, headed here to Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, that was awesome. Hey, listen, stay tuned. We got a lot more to come. We're going to talk with Pastor Bob Coy and a lot of some of the, the leadership here at Calvary Chapel to hear about how the Lord is using Calvary Chapel Fort Lauderdale to evangelize and disciple the world. Stay tuned. So I wonder when You've just you seen The Active Word with Pastor Bob Coy on TV. Now get it to go and take it with you. Search for The Active Word in iTunes and connect to all of our media, the TV program, daily radio podcast, and on-the-go Devo. It's all free to download for your mobile device. Subscribe to the podcast and you won't miss a moment of Pastor Bob's messages, all designed to keep you in step with God's Word. And once you're subscribed, follow us on Twitter and Facebook for the latest Active Word news and Pastor Bob's video blogs, where you can join the conversation on current events and topics and submit your own question for Pastor Bob. I've got a subscriber question. It reads this way, how or can a Christian have ambition for the future while keeping content in his or her current circumstance? iTunes, Facebook, and Twitter. It's how you can take the active word from the pulpit to your pocket and with you wherever you go. Calvary Chapel is founded on the teaching of God's word, that a person might grow spiritually, that they be, might become dependent upon Jesus and not upon man. Uh, we, we don't want people to become dependent on, a, on us, on the pastoral team, on a church, on the name of Calvary Chapel. But the vision of Calvary Chapel, a heart be touched, that a life might be changed, that they might grow in their personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The history of Calvary Chapel really owes a lot to its roots in worship and in music. When I first came, the sanctuary we were at held a few hundred. And to walk into a sanctuary now that holds close to 4,000 is just an unbelievable thing that has happened. The opportunity to just lead in worship every weekend, every Wednesday, and um, all kinds of other events is really a, a dream come true. And to then be able to lead worship, to be that person that can lead the congregation, lead people to the throne room, to lead them into an experience, and for many people to experience the worship even those that come and visit and don't know the Lord, they can sense that there's something going on. So they're seeing somebody next to them, worshiping, hands raised, and they can see this, this, isn't, this isn't pretend, this isn't a facade. There is something real, something sincere going on. Well, Calvary Chapel, more than any church I've ever been to, is one of those churches that when you walk away from the message, there's usually some challenge, some what they call exhortation, where you're like, okay, if you're a Christian and that means anything to you, then, then go out and do something or share the gospel. So the culture here is when you leave, you're always looking to invite someone to church, the, the waitress, your next door neighbor, a business partner. And Pastor Bob shares these stories from the pulpit all the time. And, and so as he shares them, you're thinking about people you work with, neighbors and, and friends and family members. And so the culture is that when you walk to church, you're, you're typically inviting someone, meeting someone, bringing someone. And so we always have this flow of new people. And it, we have the reputation in our community as that, that's that church that you have to check out at least once. You know, our core value here, our vision statement is until the whole world hears. Well, what's beautiful about our church is the whole world comes to our church. If you look down one of our aisles, you will see every tribe, tongue, and nation in the course of just five aisles of our church from Korea, from Thailand, from Latin America, from you name it, from Washington DC to Florida. I mean, they are just all here at our church. So we see the whole world at our church, but we also have a whole world with the responsibility of who we are. We've been given a lot to reach out into our world. And um, we've got a, a missions department here, a missions ministry that um, is thriving and growing with just the heartbeat of church planting winning souls and saving the lost and discipling them. Pastor Bob has a burden for two things, God and people. And I think when you, you're behind a pastor who really has a burden for um, knowing God in a more intimate level and then connecting this God to people, um, I love that he has a burden for lost souls. And so 
Uh, we are just desiring that the whole world hears and that God continues to make the disciples that he's made out of this campus uh, for years and generations to come. I think the vision of Calvary Chapel is to love like Christ, to learn like Christ, to lead like Christ, and to live like Christ. I think everything we do as a church funnels through the mantra of making disciples, to do our best to try to grow people, help people grow in their relationships with the Lord. Well, thanks for continuing to watch this episode. I'm really excited about Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale. This is a ministry that God used to save me. And Pastor Bob, let's talk about evangelism. Sure. So, you know, that's your heart until the whole world hears. How, does, how is the Lord using Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale to evangelize? I have this strange opinion. I think it's got a biblical basis that everyone has a burden to win the lost. They should have. Right. Uh, now, there are obviously those gifted with that evangelistic ability. But everyone in the body of Christ should, and it's twofold, one, have a love for God. You really, really love God, and then a love for people. And I've often said, if you want to be effective, just remind yourself of why you were called, God loved you, and two, you must have wanted to know this knowable God. Yeah. God's knowable, and that's a wonderful thing. Believe it or not, there are some gods, lowercase g, that are not knowable. So we have a very knowable God, and yet the agent of that knowledge is you and it's I. You know, right. God says, I want to use you guys to reach the world. Well, if you love God and you love people, that love he will use. Right. Because people have a natural inclination to draw to people who love them. It's yeah. why Jesus had so many followers. Yeah. So if Jesus has got a whole lot of followers and these people are sinners, they're heathen, they're pagan, right. Right. but they're attracted to Jesus. What was so attractive about him? His relationship with his father and his love for people. Mm -hmm. So I say the world. Mm -hmm of faith-filled people should be reaching the world of not-so-faith-filled people, and that's where evangelism begins. That's true, and the common thread we've seen in interviewing quite a few ministries, it's, it's word and deed. Yeah. There's a lot of people just preaching, and there's a lot of people doing the word or, or the, the deed, but maybe not talking about Jesus because of government funding or something. So oh, yeah. every program, there's, there's action and there's preaching. Faith comes by hearing. I have a net and you have a net, and everybody has a net. Now, some people have a 15-foot net, some people have a four-foot net. Mm -hmm. Some people have one of those little, you know, reach inside the aquarium and hope to <laughs> pick up a, a uh, you know, goldfish. Yeah. But everybody's got a net. Well, all, all, my whole hope and my whole desire over the years has been wherever I'm at and whenever I speak, throw out the net. Just throw it out. Just see what happens. Yeah. Because it's not my job to save somebody. It's my job to simply tell them they can right. be saved. And because everybody deep in their heart wants to be saved, just throw out the net. Yeah. At Calvary Chapel, we believe that that net is most effectively thrown with some kind deed, with some genuine mm -hmm. generosity, with some kind of a spiritual love that's tangible and touchable so that mm -hmm. people say, it's more than your mouth, it's your ministry to me. Right. So if in fact you do, let's say, orphan care, and I believe it's a clear mandate in the Word of God to reach out to widows and mm -hmm. orphans, mm -hmm. if you do that, but Jesus is the mm -hmm. motive factor right. now not only is it genuine but it has a lasting power because we're not just saving for here and now we're saving and changing for there and then which is yeah. the kingdom to come and yeah. that's what I'm also burdened about because you know I've yeah. said it before and I'll say it again statistics for death shouldn't shock or surprise yeah. us 10 out of 10 people die so yeah. if 10 out of 10 people die everyone's <laughs> either go to heaven or hell I want to be the tool God uses to say hey yeah. heaven's a much better place yeah. heaven's a much better choice let me help help you make that choice. Yeah, and with all the ministries under the umbrella, um, you know, God's a holistic God. He ministers to us physically, spiritually, and emotionally. 
And that's what your ministries are designed to do, is the whole person. Yeah. Well, because you can actually feed a person and uh, meet that physical need, but the spiritual need. Well, what if you're trying to minister mm -hmm. to them um, spiritually, but they can't pay attention because they're drifting off because they need food? So mm -hmm. they go hand in hand. Yeah. The most important is the spiritual need, but you're going to have to meet some of those physical and emotional needs to get their right. attention right. and to arrest their affection so that they're paying attention to what you have to say spiritually. Amen. Stay tuned when we get some more interviews and talk about evangelism because like Jesus said, the harvest is truly great and the laborers are few. So hopefully you'll hear from the Holy Spirit how to co-labor together as we reap a harvest before the glorious return of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned. As believers, we know the events recorded in the Bible really happened, but experiencing the places they happened firsthand it's a connection that will profoundly change you. And that's why I want to invite you to come with us on a tour of Israel. March the 22nd through the 29th, we begin in Galilee. We're going to also visit Caesarea. We're going to spend three days in Jerusalem and take in the Temple Mount, the Garden of Gethsemane, and of course, the Garden Tomb. And all along the way, I'm going to be teaching from the Word of God. Just go to calvaryftl.org forward slash Israel to find out all the details and to register. Start making your plans now, and I know it's going to ignite a passion for Christ in you that you can't keep inside. God bless you. South Florida is a place that may be known for a lot of uh, inappropriate behavior. You know, you certainly don't think of South Florida as being a holy place. But the Bible says that wherever sin abounds, grace abounds that much more. And I love the fact that here at Calvary, uh, people of, of all different types, as in many churches around the country, but uh, my heart leaps with joy when I see all different races and creeds and all these different denominations of people coming in here and hearing a single common message and having their lives be transformed. It's, that never gets old. We do a lot of training to evangelize. We do a lot of missions trips. We are constantly sending people out, but we just don't send people out. We train them first, both through lifestyle, it's just simply living faithfully to the word, and also uh, how to just tell your story, just how what Jesus has done for you, so that way you don't have to worry about the questions they ask or how much knowledge you have. Nobody can argue with the testimony of a changed life. Uh, our church is a very large church and we've got a lot of ministries, a lot of activity going on here. But we're finding that it's really uh, essential for us as believers, as Christians, to connect relationally with each other. So a lot of our message is connect with God in relationship and then connect with God's people in relationship. It's all through the church services that is really a portion again of that heartbeat. But it's also beyond that into the community and into the community groups and then to the broader outreach, both here in the U.S. and nationally, and then also internationally and through sort of church and sort of through community and then sort of through outreach. It all blends into bringing that out there in a broader way. You know, between the Boca campus and Boynton and Plantation, God has just really added um, to those who are being saved. And you know, we're still one church with many locations. You know, people say, well, how many churches are you? We're still one. We just meet in various places, but we all still come together as, and rally as God's church. And so whether it's through the men's ministry, whether it's through singles ministry, whether it's through ICON, whether it's through, we have a law enforcement fellowship, we have a medical ministry, we're starting a military outreach, and it's all a, a, a tools by which we can share the gospel with people, not only within the four walls of the church, but in our community, uh, in our state, in our country, and, uh, and globally. We, we teach the Word of God, and I know a lot, of teachers, a lot of churches do that, but we teach the Word of God regular, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, and I think that in itself is obviously an evangelism tool. But the cornerstone of the church to uh, take the Word of God and apply it to our lives and, and live like that, I think is something that is uh, unique these days and it is a, an evangelism tool in and of itself. I think it's attractive to the world that is out there lost and searching. We have a pulpit ministry where of course we have a pastor with an open Bible giving the Word of God out. and that naturally uh, frees God up to move His Spirit through our sanctuary. And as 
there's a call for them to respond to what the Lord has done with them, to come forward and, and pray for salvation. When there's those types of invitations nearly every service, it's, it's exciting to see that evangelism is happening every, every week, every day. Not just for a special event or an Easter service at the stadium, but no, it's a, it's a lifestyle for our body now. And so we, we make disciples of parents, of kids, no matter what the age is. You know, a lot of people say the kids' church, that, that's the future church. But it's not, it's the present church. You know, the best chance to, to win a middle schooler for the gospel is another middle schooler, not a 40 or 50 year old. And so we try to give those, those middle school, high school kids uh, that charge. Your role is to make disciples in your school, in your neighborhood. It's not the job primarily of the pastor or even of your parents, but you're part of the body of Christ and you do your part. And, that, and that's what we believe. We have a evangelism opportunity every Christmas in our church for the last couple of years. And we give Bibles as gifts to people that we know. And last year, I had the opportunity to give my Bible to my target cashier. Thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Revelations. We're in Fort Lauderdale visiting Pastor Bob Coy at Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale. Pastor Bob, you guys discipled me, mm. and I can't thank you enough for that. Back in 99, Calvary House in 2001. You know, that's the vision for Calvary Chapel is to make disciples. So talk about some of the programs, some of the ways that the Lord's used in the ministry to, to really build people up in the faith. You know, Pastor Chuck, it was years ago, I was challenged by a friend in the faith, a pastor. He said, what's your mission? What's your mandate? What one thing do you have a heartbeat for? And I said, wow, you know, the whole Bible. He said, no, 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 break it down, make it a sentence. <laughs> Long story short, after some deep consideration and some prayerful thought, I went to Matthew 28, you know, hmm. in 1819, you know, moving along there at the end of the book, you know, go ye into all nations, you know, and make disciples. So here's what I'm thinking. If my mission statement, two words, make disciples, mm -hmm. is the heartbeat, and it's the heartbeat of God, I believe, it's the heartbeat of the church, then in the same way a shoe manufacturer makes shoes, mm -hmm. there's leather, there's workers, and what comes out? What's shipped out? What goes mm -hmm. out the big truck? Shoes. Right. Right. Well, same thing should happen with every church. In mm -hmm. other words, in a church there's resources, there's people, and what should come out? Heathens, let me say that affectionately, should come in and disciples should come out. Right. So what can we do to really make a disciple? Well, you have to have interested people. They want to know God. And then you have to have the kind of educational, academic environment to actually infuse them with a knowledge and an understanding where they come out disciples. And I want to just say, because the hunger's there. The yeah. hunger is genuinely there, that if in fact you feed that hunger base, next right. thing you know, you're making disciples. And yeah. that's what we joy in doing. Amen to that. Stay tuned. We're going to talk more about discipleship and some of the ways that God is using Calvary Chapel Fort Lauderdale to make disciples and, and world changers and Christian leaders for the next generation. Stay tuned. Discipleship is the opportunity for one person to take some one other person and invest the Word of God into them and live the Word of God before them. And that's really the heartbeat of everything that we do here, and it trickles all the way down from our senior pastor. You know, it comes from the, the Great Commission, where Jesus said, you know, I want you to go into all the world and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you, and then Jesus promises us that He'll be with us. And so that's really what the heartbeat of our church is. We're about making disciples. We, of course, train in a musical sense, but also, more, more importantly, train spiritually and scripturally so that the worship we do lines up with the Bible, with the Word of God. We have things like Christianity 101 courses, completely free, uh, just show up as you are to these classes. And what we try to do is really instruct them on the basics of the Christian faith. This is what Christianity is about. To know that there is a structure here at the church that is able to uh, support and to come alongside is huge. Individually, one by one, through our community groups, in a home setting where you have somebody that is leading the home Bible study, 
and leading a, a small group, making disciples in that way. The Ravi Zacharias School is that very thing to equip, you know, what makes um, sense um, in our heart, you know, as Ravi says, need, needs to make sense in our minds. And so how do we create a, um, Christians that are thinking? Uh, I, I think the thing I love most is just watching people grow. You meet, meet a person who's kind of aimless and doesn't really know what they want to do with their life and you just watch as a steady investment of the, of the word and discipleship and accountability and friendship and prayer and they start to become this person. It's kind of like watching your own kids grow and develop. Uh, one of them in particular is Calvary Christian Academy. There's over 1,700 students there today, and it's the whole mission to make disciples of these students. Uh, pretty amazing. I mean, we've got K through 12th graders, and um, to see what's happening in their lives and seeing how they're now moving out as graduates to influence this world positively for Jesus Christ is just amazing. It's heartwarming. What will it profit a man if he gains the entire world, yet he loses his own soul? The time is short and it's pressing and the clock is ticking and uh, the decisions that we make today will impact us forever. Well, I want to thank our viewers again for watching another episode of Revelations. And Pastor Bob, thank you so much for letting us spend a couple days with you and your team. You have some superstars and an amazing staff. And I've always said God's been into team building since Adam and Eve. So what a team you got. Thank you very, very much. Um, I'd love an opportunity to pray for you and the ministry. You've been praying for me every I service be and before be every honored. Bible study. So Absolutely. let's do that with our viewers okay. watching. Thank you. And uh, Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for an opportunity that Pastor Bob and I can pray together and touch and agree that you alone are God. You are Lord of all. And we pray for the churches that may be watching, the body mm. of Christ, individuals yes, that are not plugged into a good Bible-believing church, that they would seek and find a place to call home. Mm. And Lord, to consider Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale, and to see the work you're doing here and how you use people to minister to community. And even take that message abroad through missions and every other opportunity to partner with other ministries around the globe. Yes, so I just pray that you would continue to bless Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale, Pastor Bob, the board, the staff, all the volunteers and ministers uh, that you would continue to give them wisdom from above on how to reach the next generation and make disciples and evangelize again before your glorious return so empower them through your holy spirit and we ask you to do this in jesus name, jesus name. Amen. Amen. amen amen thank you very You're much welcome. enjoyed that thanks again for watching and uh, just want to encourage our viewers one more time to take a look at the website it's calvaryftl.org until our next episode of revelations may you and your family be blessed thanks for watching